Well, good morning, everybody. So, um, I titled my, uh, my presentation, How to Profit from the Booming Lithium Markets. It's uh, a very, very um, uh, succinct presentation. As I've expressed this morning, we are focusing on uh, producing strictly lithium hydroxide. So I, I warn you, I'm the president, I'm the founder, I'm very, very positive about this project, so I will be making looking for forward-looking statements. All the numbers are uh, subject to the 43101 uh, 2014 and updated 2016 feasibility study to be filed next week. Uh, so all the numbers are from that. So very, very rapidly, what we are, we are a hard rock lithium project based in the province of Quebec. We have developed over the course of the last seven years what is now uh, recognized as the second largest and richest reserve of spa domain. Uh, make the difference between reserve and resources. I know everybody here knows about it, but uh, we still have to educate people. Uh, fully permitted. Finally got our permits back in September of 2015, so we're ready to build. Uh, we have decided back in 2011 that for the, uh, the value of our shareholders would be better to, instead of only sending uh, spa domain concentrate to the Chinese, conversion facilities would be a good idea to convert in Quebec, trying to get advantage of lower transport costs. While we were doing that, we realized that the, the, um, the world was evolving, the battery sector, lithium ion battery sectors was evolving, and lithium hydroxide was going to become the lithium compound of choice with very, very little world capacity. So we said, okay, what advantage do we have in Quebec? Of course, uh, first that pops up your mind is hydroelectricity, long-term affordable hydroelectricity contracts. So one and one made three, we decided to adapt a known, very long time known and proven technology electrolysis uh, used in the chloralkali industry. Contrary to uh, our uh, friends at uh, Neometal, we decided to modify the front end of it to uh, convert sulfate solution instead of a chloride solution. So that's why we have a proprietary process on the, uh, the feed material of the electrolysis. That allowed us to develop what is now the, uh, would be the cleanest way of making lithium hydroxide or any lithium compounds, uh, as a matter of fact. It's giving, giving us a cost leading advantage over anybody else, including the brine producers, and like I said, is going to be the cleanest way of making it. One of the interesting aspects I did not mention earlier in the advantage of our company is that we've decided back in 2013 to uh, uh, hire and keep in house a full technical team. No mining engineer, no geologists, but chemists and process engineers so that we focus really on the value added on the conversion. So very, very rare would you see that in a junior company. Our, market, our business plan is very simple. <clears throat> we also, as a, a, a world beggar, as a junior, no money, you always want to find ways of reducing your risk and reducing your, your dilution, but advancing your project. We realized uh, a couple of years ago that even once in full production, we still would need to qualify the products. And that usually takes between 12 and sometimes up to 24 months once you're in full production. Well, when you think and you consider that it costs five to seven million a month to run the mine, run the hydromet plant, that can be very expensive on top of the capex to build. So we decided one of the best approach was to build a phase one plant. By no mean, it's not a pilot plant, it's a phase one plant, the smallest commercial size plant we could design using the same membrane electrolysis cells the same square uh, footage of membranes that are going to be installed in the large commercial plant. The idea is to be able to engage clients while we're building the commercial mine and plant with commercial representative samples so that we can shorten, we hope, the period from 12 to maybe three up to six months. So therefore reducing by maybe 75 million to 100 million dollars liquidity is required to really uh, qualify your products. 
To do that, we decided that uh, we would be building the phase one plant. The overall budget is $38 million, $25 million to build it, and two years of operation afterward. That was dictated by the initial um, uh, request we made to Sustainable Development Technology Canada. Since it's a financial help that they g gave us, they wanted to commercialize the technology. Uh, they wanted it to work for at least two years so that we prove to everybody that it works uh, and it can be commercialized. So that's why 25 to build, 13 for two, the following two years of operation. We were able to finance this through obtaining $16 million of non-refundable grants, free money, no, no strings attached, $10 million of a private placement we just recently did with the Quebec government, and finally, like I mentioned this morning, we were able to secure a, an initial purchase order with Johnson Matthey Battery Materials for goods and services in the amount of $12 million to be paid upfront. That closes the overall $38 million. We also were able to secure an initial long-term supply agreement with Johnson Matthey for the commercial plant. Obviously, before putting their $12 million in, they definitively had a good thorough due diligence review, technical and economical, because it's very nice to be able to make lithium hydroxide, but it has to be economical, so they convince themselves and jump right in. So <clears throat> we are currently uh, filing the uh, full 43101 next week. We will then start engaging uh, discussions for the project financing that we hope to be able to put in place by uh, the end of 2016 with a vision of being in production by 2018, mid-2018. You're going to say, Guy, it's very, very uh, too tight. I'll explain to you why we will be able to uh, achieve that. As a reminder, very rapidly, mine and concentrator, about 300 kilometers north of Shibugamu, three hours or 300 kilometers of uh, truck, then 500 kilometers of rail to Shamunigan. So, immediately to Shamunigan. We had to update the feasibility study uh, of 2014 because we changed the location where we will be building the uh, commercial plant and the phase one plant. We were fortunate enough to be approached by the city of Shamunigan that uh, wanted to, uh, I would say, uh, reuse or bring somebody in the uh, recently closed paper mill uh, uh, facility in Shamunigan. So this is photoshopped to show what buildings, existing buildings were keeping, and here is where the existing buildings that we don't need are going to be demolished to the expense of the, uh, of the city. All the services that you need. We need 50 megawatt of electricity. So imagine, imagine directly hooked to the Hydro-Quebec power dam, water source obviously, the rail, that's in our, on our land. So the rail out, the rail in, uh, natural gas, everything that you need is there. One of the interesting aspects of Shawinigan also, we only paid two, well, we will be over time paying $2 million for this. Saves us about $20 million from what we were supposed to build to start with. But more important as a junior, it allows me to postpone a large project financing. Up it's impossible for me to go and build these two buildings without having the full project financing already in place. Here, because it exists, allows me to install immediately my phase one plant, allows me to keep the phase one plant up and running on a tooling services special dedicated line once the commercial plant in, is in operation. This is already stripped, already ready, we will start Hydro-Quebec is hooking that in a couple of weeks, but we already have access, already starting to install the phase one plant, which should be up and running by the end of 2016. All of the paper machines in these two large buildings are going to be dismantled. Well, they are being dismantled as we speak. It will be finished by end of January of 2017, so immediately in February I can start installing the equipment. So that's why I say it's an aggressive timeline, but it's made possible because the buildings are there and we have no problem with seasonability or financing ahead <coughs> of the project. So rapidly, highlights of the feasibility. 
We can argue all day about the parameters. Are you okay with an exchange rate of 0.8? Are you okay with lithium hydroxide at 9,500 US, lithium carbonate at seven? Listening to the panel this morning, I think I'm overly conservative. I should use uh, double digit numbers. I think it's conservative. I think it's acceptable, but it makes good numbers. We still have 26 year mine life. We didn't change that. Payback 2.4 years. Net present value, $1.2 billion after tax, 30% IR. Still a capex around $550 million. 2.10 for the mine, uh, 249, 2.39 for the mine and concentrator, 3.10 for the hydromet plant in Shawinigan. But the real highlight of the feasibility study is the costs of the products. And I explained that a little bit this morning, but I'll go into a little more details about the advantage we will always, always have over all of the lithium sector in China. Because uh, as you heard, the lithium sector in China is fully dependent on importing raw material from Australia. So to start with, the concentrate cost at the mine is about the same as the Aussie dollars in, in Australia. So the, toss of, the ton of concentrate FOV mine would be similar. Where it dif it's different, it's where it gets into the conversion facility. Our cost, about 185 US. If you heard uh, uh, Anthony this morning, he's now uh, talking about 600. My last numbers I have in uh, CIF China entering the conversion capacity is around $485. So imagine at six, I would be even more happy. But at, you have to remember, you have $300 advantage US, but it takes 7.5 tons of concentrate, roughly, to make one ton of lithium carbonate equivalent. So to start with, before you do any conversion, you have already $2,200 US minimum cost advantage that the Chinese will never, never be able to remove. So that gives us an advantage. The other advantage is that everybody else currently doing hydroxide is first making lithium carbonate. We decided by using the electrolysis and then reconverting in, in, in hydroxide, an added cost of about $1,000. We decided to go directly to hydroxide. So it cost our cost, it cut our cost significantly. So just to tell you, if you go, this is provided by uh, Ruskill. It's uh, the cash cost and overhead included, but cash cost in dark blue here of making lithium hydroxide combined technical and battery grades. Last year, there was not more than 22% that was battery grade. So even with a combined cost, the recognized lowest cost of produ production of lithium units, SQM, were still close to $500 cheaper than them. If we were to compete on the battery grade, we would definitely be at least $1,000 cheaper than the SQM. So, there might be an oversupply in five or 10 years from now, but the question is, when there's an oversupply, who gets thrown out? Definitely not the lowest cost of production. That's interesting. And for sake of time, I won't go into much detail. Here you see the cost of carbonate. Again, you need to understand what kind of carbonate or what purity of carbonate. This here, again, is combined technical and battery grades. You see <coughs> from the, the Chinese, the Chen Chi, the other Chinese, their costs. We have a very, very big margin of advantage over these. This was based on $430 US CIF China for the spot domain. I'm talking 485. Anthony was talking about 600 earlier. So even at 430, the, their cost of concentrate we have a very, very big margin that they will not be able to reduce. But what's important to really assess from this, it's still technical and battery grades lithium carbonate. Our, because of the process, because of the use of a, a membrane electrolysis, because we did put a lot of effort of reducing the level of impurities in the feed material, what we get out of the, uh, of the process is 99.99% spot domain um, lithium carbonate. Just as the, an assessment, 
when battery grade spot, um, carbonate was selling for 5,000, four nines was selling for 13,000. A couple of weeks ago, somebody called me very desperately because he's using 99.99, low quantities, but nevertheless. So we never had supply agreement signed with anybody. Now he needs to purchase spot. So he was quoted a month and a half ago, $33,000 for his 4.9, when the battery grade was spot price around $18,000. So you see, even if, if rapidly you think that we are higher cost than SQM and Albemarle on their technical grade, we will always be lower than anybody else on the 99.9 .9 to start with. So that's an interesting avenue. I didn't talk about the flexibility of our process, and I, we don't have the time to do that because of, uh, of the schedule. But at will, we can adjust to either make hydroxide, monohydrate, or carbonate. So depending on how the market evolves and all the pricings and the needs of the market at a certain point, we have the flexibility with the process to address both. I won't go into the, because of the time, I don't go. So the conclusion, we're perfectly timed to enter the chain of supply. There is currently a shortage. It's going to increase the shortage. It's going to be terrible, in my opinion, for the next three, four years. And uh, we're going to be one of the successful entering that. We have a permitted. There's only three permitted projects around the world. We're the only one that is not locked with anybody. And uh, so that gives us another <laughs> value added. We have a uh, leading advantage over our peers. Oh, I didn't mention, but we have been all the way been supported by the Quebec government, different tax incentives, etc. But one point very important when we enter the discussion of the project financing is the newly relaunched Plan All program in Quebec with a $1 billion special uh, fund earmarked to help develop natural resources north of the 49 parallel. We do qualify. They make direct equity investment in projects and or companies that are one single project that do qualify, up to 20% of the uh, capex required to start. The last 20%, but nevertheless, that's a, the last is all as important as the first. So that sums up very rapidly, and I'm already seven minutes over my time. Sorry about this. Tracy, I'll take any questions. Thank you.